Well, I'll try and do a quick piece here. It's not exactly the best weather. This is what I take on my art hikes. A bit like ultralighting your hiking gear. I've gone through a similar process with the art gear. So this is my watercolour palette. These are Chinese made, a couple of quid. They're wood. These little bits are well used. I use it um, for the you know, all my landscape stuff. I tend to use this now just because it's light. It's the lightest. It's about 70. I actually weighed it. It was at 70 grams or something like that. You can go lighter. I will show on the screen my lighter versions that I've got at home. I didn't drag them all out here. Because, you know, on this sort of several day hike, it's not worth bringing here all that stuff here. I should, really shouldn't have brought that, this, this thing, which we'll get to. So, yeah, that's what I use. I, I, what colours I use are a mixture of Winsor Newton Professional and Rembrandt. Rembrandt are a brilliant brand and well worth the money. Now, regards to pens, I do pen and ink and pen and watercolour. I might try and do a watercolour today. So we've got the Kurataki brush pen which I recently cleaned up and it seems to be a lot happier than it was. So got it, you can see it's got a ring on there. I've actually eye dropped this so this is full of rotary ink. Talking of rotary ink, we bring a, a thing of that. The nice thing about that is it's got little things so you can actually fill stuff like this and pens with it much easier. But obviously you can't use it with fountain pens but you can use it with these pens technical pens i'll probably try and use a fountain pen today and then we've got the ink for i use diatramentis document black for the fountain pens because fountain pen ink and is a different animal to rotary ink rotary ink is more like indian ink and these are my vintage pens. I bought a selection, probably more, more than I should. I usually would only bring maybe two and two of these. I brought a few more because it was a longer trip, but you know, I would usually only bring a few of these. I used to bring a big pencil case, which if I film, I'll show, but it's, it's just a bit too big. And it's like, why do I need to bring everything? And I realized I only really work in ink, brush and ink and watercolor. I've got a few extra pens, my emergency pens. So I've got a lot of pens. Not too many pens. I was thinking of bringing some Lyra crayon, which are these graphite crayons, but well, the problem with them is fixing them. So we've got the Platinum Preppies. This is what I carry around with me normally. These are my everyday carry pens. 0.2, 0 0.3, 0.5. Pilot V7, VTEC 7, which is in re, uh, again, eyedropped. A uh, very battered looking, if you can see that, a very battered Hero 395 or 396, I forget the exact name. A bit like a flexi modern pen. Very cheap, you can get them on AliExpress for like five quid, maybe a bit more nowadays. And a water brush. And I'll probably use a water brush later on, but we've, we've also got a brush for watercolour itself. And some ink work, but I don't like using it for ink work. We've got this, which is my travel brush. Now this is quite posh. Um, you don't need to go as posh as this. These are a Skoda brushes. Given it's kind of, you know, my job to do watercolour, I have very posh brushes. But actually the Versatile, which they sell, which isn't Sable, are just as good. But this is, I think, Kalinsky Sable. And it's their travel brush. That's the reason why I don't like using it for the ink. I don't want it wrecked. I've got some of the versatile ones as well, which are cheaper, and the synthetics. The synthetics are as good. So this is my aching cabinet. That's 1930s, I think. Usually you can tell by the, this thing, the clip. The lower clip. This is my swan, one of my swans. SM200, that's what it is. And again, likely to be 30s because of the, the lower clip. So that's like 90 years old. And this is 1950s. This is one of my favourites. It's a French pen, the Evergood. These are all got gold nibs, all flex pens. And they are my favourite pens. And I'll probably use those. Now I have to put everything back. 
because I'm sitting on a log. I'm sitting on a log near Bignor Roman Villa, actually, off Saint Street. Apparently, the Slindon Estate, or looking towards the Slindon Estate, looking towards the Roman Villa, actually. I'll do a drawing from here. This is my Dela Roni graduate pad. It's a graduate mixed media pad and it's really good. And it's what I tend to use. It's, it's lighter than the Fabriano. I've got a Fabriano mixed media is also what I use and that's really good. And then this is my paper box which I got from Flying Tiger. You can get these things called tough boxes which are A3 protection boxes. This is a bit battered now. It's a bit knackered but it works as a watercolour table and then you could just you know use the paper loose i have a mixture of paper here and we're going to go into everything with artistico cm 100 fabriano rosapina fabriano uh some de Roni, and some cheap artway 30 percent cotton paper real mixture we're not going to use that today because i don't think it's worth it <laughs> that scenery is not worth it well, the scenery is worth it, but it's more the weather. It's more the weather. The weather's not great. So, we're going to see if we can do a time lapse. Now, this is using the Evergood pen, the French Evergood pen, the button filler fountain pen. The trees go a bit lost in this one. It's very hard in watercolour to keep the white areas or light areas without using masking fluid, which I didn't have. I like to keep things fairly loose in my drawing and not define it too much for the watercolour. Very proud of the sky. I think that worked really well. I did struggle with some of the haziness of the distance, hence I'm adding the purples here. Cobalt Violet and Windsor Violet Dioxacene. Working wet and wet like this in a cold day probably wasn't the wisest of things because it takes a long time to dry. It's really a technique of mixing colours on the page, which is the De La Roni graduate pad. It's not really suited to cold days, it's better for warm days. So I started using this graffito. My best work but yeah you can see what I do I have to wait for this to dry probably oh, sorry a beard caught in the microphone it will change as it dries it's always a difficulty doing what color on a day like this when it's very cold yeah, you obviously can't feel it but it's a massive breeze well, it's the sunshine sort of coming and going the lighting is changing on this and so I sort of lent into the the colors um, you know, I was like, okay, screw it, we'll, we'll, we'll add the colours in and the scrubito because you know it's, it just keeps changing, and because it's so cold, it doesn't dry very quickly, so it, it, it sort of unfortunately it kind of lost the trees a little bit, but you know, this is what I do, or well, partly what I do. So the next day I decided to go to Chankton Bree Ring and paint a view from it. This is the DVD style commentary. Here I am drawing the trees, which you just saw. I try and keep things fairly abstract and simple because I think if you go too hyper-realistic, especially in the drawing stage, it kind of limits the watercolor part. Really simpler is better. I'm using the Aitken Lambert cabinet pen that I mentioned earlier, the black hard rubber pen from the 1930s. I'm using the Fabriano Artistico paper mentioned before. This is a posh one. I 
here we have the watercolour laying in various greens. I think it was really kind of a bit of a symphony of green. That was what I was struggling with, was trying to use all these greens with the cerulean blue and the ultramarine with the yellow. And also I think I used a bit of thalo green. And there I am laying the cobalt violet into the sky for the gloaming. And the thing about watercolour, you are working up from white. So you're showing the white from the page. So it's a gradual process building up the colour, but also the tone. And so it's always a bit of a struggle. You can't just lay it in with, like, oh, this, these, these are the black bits, these are the dark bits. You have to kind of think ahead and build it up slowly. So the trees were a bit of a challenge to try and get that contrast between them and the light of the foreground and the background. And also keeping that track in, you'll see there's a track running across in front of the trees. That was easy to get lost. And just expressing the shadows, trying not to get too muddy, because if you lay too much watercolor in at once and you lay it too thickly, it just goes into a sort of a mud color and gets very flat. And of course I'm using my sable brush I mentioned in the gear earlier. It's always fun trying to keep these sort of stable. I did actually try and stabilize it with tracking, but my software won't keep it in one place. And there's a final piece. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see the video, Wild Campaign on the South Downs Way that they're from, you can click the center of the screen now. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click like or subscribe as it really helps the channel.